we're now going to take a look at tweening and morphing, which are basically tools used for the production of animation. So basically what we first have is tweening, and this is short for in-betweening. And what it does is fill in blank frames between two frames drawn by an author. So I show an object where I want it to start, and then I show an object where I want to finish at a later frame. When I use a tweening tool, it automatically inserts the intermediate frames between the start and ending frames. This helps give the illusion of movement and would have been a rather time consuming process if I had to draw each of those intermediate frames myself. For morphing, it's pretty much the exact same thing. I start with the object where I want it to originally be, but instead in my end frame, I don't just have it moved to where I want it to be, but I also might have changed the object's shape. So the object, the way it starts and the object, the way it finishes might be a completely different shape altogether. Okay, but they're pretty much the same process except morphing changes shape. So let's have a quick look now at what it's like to tween and morph. So basically, here is my animation. Okay, in this first animation here, I have the ball moving across the screen. Okay, and as you can see, I go through every single frame. In each frame along this timeline, I have moved the ball ever so slightly so that it gives the illusion that it's moving. Now, it's pretty jittery, but I can fix that up by adjusting the frame rate of the animation too. So if I go here and we might make it a standard of 60 frames per second. And so when I run this animation, the ball runs a lot smoother across the screen. But still, the way I created it was very time consuming because in each frame, although I could still paste it using software, it takes time to move it slightly. In this next scenario, all I've done is insert the ball at frame one where I want to be, and then at frame 60, I've said where I want the ball to go. In order for me to create the animation using the power of tweening, I just have to right click and go create motion tween. So now when I run the animation, the intermediate frames have been inserted by the software. And we can see here that it shows an arrow showing that it knows that it's moving the actual ball to where I want it to go. So that was obviously a lot faster for me to animate. Finally, we'll have a look at morphing. So in my last frame, I've got a red square. And in my first frame, once again, I've got a blue ball. In this type of tweening to do a morph, I've actually got to break the pixels apart. And that's why the ball's all pixelated here. I had to highlight and go control B. It's the same with the actual square at the end of my animation. The, twix, the pixels must be free to move in order for a morph to occur. So I'll go to frame one and we'll go create shape tween this time. And now when I run my animation, it turns the ball into a square. Okay, so that is a morph there. So I hope you see the advantages of using both tweening and morphing over actually creating animations frame by frame from scratch. They save time and in the case of morphing, there's a lot of difficult frames in there as you can see with the transitioning okay, that would be to draw to make this run smoothly. Okay, So they make it easier to produce animation as well as saving time. So I hope you enjoyed that.